Hey guys, so this is an interesting video, and it goes along with what I was saying in the previous one about Bill Gates and the whole, this whole like vegan, uh, like psychosis that's going on, and and how it has like literally nothing to do with climate and and all this stuff. And this guy here, anti-war mindset, he's only got 165 subscribers. This video came, I saw this video after I posted the thing about Bill Gates, but. Basically, what he's talking about in this video, I don't, I don't know how much I can show it in this, in my video, but basically, let me just read out his the, um, the um, description here. Soybean oil, not soybean meal, has the highest crush margins profitability, and the majority of soybeans are crushed to squeeze out the oil for cooking, for cooking oil, processed food, and biofuel. And remember that vegans consume many soy products, so soybean production is mainly driven for direct human usage, not livestock. Soybean production and land speculation drives for deforestation of the forest, rainforest, cattle pasture expansion is merely a symptom of the process. So basically what he's saying in this video is that and he broke it down there's a few articles that he goes into um showing the data and there's this misconception that the deforestation that's ongoing is to is to basically make room for cattle which is it's basically complete logical falla fallacy where in reality um there are other factors that are that are much worse deforestation a much worse of deforestation than our desired it eat meat and raise cattle on land and for example one of those is um roads so i think it was <clears throat> let's see if we can find it uh yeah so here we go so i would like to play it but i don't remember what the rules are and shit with with youtube so uh, basically, what we're talking about in this video is 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 how ridiculous the notion that deforestation and cattle are uh, uh, cattle pastures are, are um, go hand in hand, right? And uh, in the beginning of this particular video, he mentioned some of the some of the some of the ratios, right? Where when it comes to soybean, it's roughly six or seven percent is of soy uh soybean production is for human consumption about six or seven percent is for animal agriculture and the rest like 90 something percent basically or 89 or whatever percent is for growing this soybean oil which is for humans for human consumption so at the end of the day vegans who predominantly eat the soybean oil make up for like you know 90 percent of the soybean production <laughs> you know of of what's going on when it comes to deforestation for the growth of soybeans cows make up a very small portion of that which is very interesting and uh here in this part of the video at 638 uh here is one thing that he talks about which is road construction the um, maybe i'll read yeah i'll read that first so road construction leads to accelerated deforestation and is possibly the single most important direct cause of deforestation for example ledek 1992 found that in panama for each kilometer of all-weather road between 400 and 1000 hectares of forest were cleared for each kilometer of an all-weather road between 400 and 1000 hectares of forest were cleared that is ridiculous yeah so an one eleventh of a hectare One, like an eleventh of a hectare is what you need for a single cow. Here, how much land does a cow need? A typical thousand pound cow with a calf. Oh, so that's actually two. One animal unit. Okay, one animal unit is a typical one thousand pound cow with a calf, which needs around eleven zero point one one hectares of pasture in excellent condition. 
and applied uh, and, and applied applied acres and up, up to 3.2 hectares of pasture in poor condition and low precipitation levels. So, you know, you're talking about almost, you know, enough space for each kilometer of road. You're talking almost enough space for like 10,000 cows to like 200 cows for each kilometer of road, you know, or something like that. I That was just num the math I did in my head just now. Um, let's see if we find another one. These are per acres. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is just annoying how it's always like this with these. I've noticed that Google kind of tries to avoid answering certain questions, but probably maybe that's not the case here. Anyway, let's go back to this article. So, uh, roadside ranch land was sold in Nicaragua at about three times the price of comparable land one day's walk away. In Rondonia, Brazil, the paving of an existing road was the main factor in clearing 100,000 square kilometers of rainforest and focused in the early 80s. Of rainforest and focused in the early 80s the world's attention on this relationship livestock ranching with little supervision requirement and a few bulky inputs became an attractive activity along these new roads so there are so many other factors that are sig much more significant than you know having a bunch of cows grazing uh, somewhere and there's so many ridiculous arguments with these vegans about how you know um, ruminants are bad for the environment and how we're deforesting everything when it's like the vast majority of the deforestation is actually to make uh, processed foods for vegans right uh, like nobody eats soybean oil except people who have like these consumer eating disorders these consumerism driven Consu uh, consumerism driven uh, eating like diets basically like you know um, it's pretty well established that humans are actually carnivores we are predominantly meat eaters and for about two and a half million years we've that's the only thing we've been eating is just shit loads of meat every day and uh, it wasn't until roughly 40 50 thousand years ago now I do have some studies elsewhere but we can talk about that another time uh, I can show those because I don't want to like make the videos too confusing by jumping back and forth between multiple subjects but um, you know 50,000 years ago was roughly when we first started sort of introducing things like grains in our diet and uh, and then it wasn't until like 10,000 or so years ago maybe up to 20,000 years ago maybe 15,000 years ago where we actually started to introduce you know uh, vegetables you got to understand that most of the vegetables we eat today they've been bioengineered quote unquote so either through actual gene manipulation or through selective breeding to actually taste good so and to be at and to become quote unquote uh, 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 um, edible so you know most of these I'm sure you've seen pictures of what you know uh, There's these uh, pictures of like what vegetables used to look like. Like here, this is your, let's see if they've got, oh gosh. See like this is like watermelons. There's like nothing in there that you can eat, right? And we've bred it to become like this. So like they were never really like fully edible. It was like, you know what I mean? Um, like most of these foods in their original form were really tiny uh, they didn't they didn't taste particularly good it's almost as if they weren't supposed to be eaten 
but we've selectively breeded them to become foods, right? Anyway, most people know that already. So this cons this idea that um, this idea that you know vegans are the you know the greatest human beings that have ever lived is completely wrong. In fact, it's the opposite. And you see these these not just vegans but these climate change people who who just they they just don't even understand high school like literally they they they're completely oblivious to to even pretty basic uh, concepts in biology or uh, geology and and things like that and they're going around acting like they're the um, they're the you know that they're the most virtuous people on earth. <laughs> when in fact everything they're doing it's just a it's a marketing trick this is a, a classic old school way for the industry and corporations to trick people is that they uh, uh, they turn a marketing campaign into like a, a a human rights thing right or they turn a, a marketing for example when they when they when there was a time where it was seen as like dirty for women to smoke cigarettes and the smoking industry, um, they were they 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 were selling shitloads of cigarettes to all these men. So they had the infrastructure down to distribute cigarettes all over the place. But they the the only reason why they didn't get more sales is because women were not buying. But women had access to all these cigarettes. The cigarettes were in bathrooms. You you know in these you know you could buy them from these little machines on the walls in bathrooms you can buy them at the bus stops you could buy them at the bar you could buy them everywhere you know there was an infrastructure in place and so what they did is they hired this guy called edward bernays i'm sure some of you have heard of this where they created this kind of marketing campaign where it was basically about liberating women right it was um it was literally what they did is they just tricked women into believing that smoking cigarettes was an act of liberation against the judgment of men. And then they all became fucking smokers because now it was sexy for women to to smoke cigarettes because uh, and they made a shitload of money because now it was this like, again, another one of these man, uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Man here doesn't you know doesn't get to decide for me this and this and this and this and oh it's it's female rights oh it's feminism so basically what happened is that um the whole the same mentality behind feminism today is the mentality that tricked or that was gullible to the marketing schemes and marketing strategies associated with getting women to smoke cigarettes and that's how veganism works it's like by making people feel virtuous by making people feel like they're they're making a difference right and you know when you watch these these vegan movies these pro vegan movies like cowspiracy i mean cowspiracy is a disgusting right this this movie right the the author, the guy the guy who's the guy who's producing it and directing it or whatever and and star, starring in it he spends the first 15 mo minutes of the movie basically admitting how fucking retarded he is by saying oh we used to save our water we used to be you know we used to take 2 minute showers and he just goes through this whole thing where he's basically just admitting how fucking retarded he is how he doesn't do his own research how he can't like just like literally just spends the first 10 15 20 minutes like basically admitting to everybody how how he just his brain just uh, is not capable of figuring out what's going on and then he goes on again despite admitting to everybody that he's he's like he just he 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 he, he he's easily gullible to all sorts of random bullshit he goes on on a limb and st targets the, the 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 ruminant cow industry without actually realizing that the cows are the only thing we have that can actually uh, recover the soil from plant agriculture right because when you're growing plants on soil you're taking this 
the nutrients out of the soil. When you turn the soil over, you ruin this kind of sub this subsurface and surface microbial like equilibrium. And what happens is the only way to really recover from decades of farming is to have ruminants and, and animals on the fields grazing, shitting, pissing, and stamping the stuff down. And it, and, and it only takes a few years, two, three, four years, to really start seeing the results in, in the recovery. Um, but yeah, so roads are one of the worst. Construct Road construction is, is really the worst. Um, growing plants for human consumption is worse. Um, again, like for example, out here in Finland, um, the most of the cows actually grow. Um, let's see if we can get a search. Uh, yeah, looks it's called silvo pasture. is a type of agroforestry, agricultural forestry where cow, cows graze within wooded areas, eating invasive plants and helping restore. So this is what we see in Finland all over the place. You don't even notice that there's cows around because they're all like in the forest and shit. Like, so silvo, silvo pasture. You see, you don't need to deforest the fucking forests to grow cows because animals live in forests. Most animals live in fucking forests. Moose, deer, bunnies, crows, all the animals out here, none of them are growing on the fields. It's too dangerous for most of those animals to be on fields because they're going to get picked up by the fucking eagle or the owl. Okay, there aren't, you know, predators big enough to really attack a, a, a cow like this, but this is actually, this looks like the Finnish cow. This looks actually like Finland. Um... This, this is like exactly what the Finnish cow looks like. This could actually literally be a picture from Finland. The thing that I've noticed is that like, so a couple years ago, no, maybe it was like three, four, five years ago. I don't remember. I am um, one of our sheep. So we have a lot of sheep here. One of our sheep accidentally, uh, accidentally got two babies and they were both male and we couldn't have them stay at the barn and this was during the winter so the two males they came here and I took care of them for a few months and I bottle fed them every fucking day they were the most adorable little critters out there and what I did is um, I took care of them I, I really really took care of them and uh, I took them for a walk in the forest almost every day and it's unbelievable. They were eating everything. They were eating the blueberry leaves. They were eating ferns. They were eating everything compared to the sheep that are growing on the field, which basically only eat grass. And these two bubbies, I called them bubbies, and um, they, um, they were so happy. They were so lively, but they grew fast. Those cocksuckers, they grew so fast that by the time the rest of the sheep arrived, the same aged uh lamb were like a third of the size compared to these guys and i was bottle feeding them two three times a day but i was taking them for a walk in the forest uh in the in the um, on the rocks on the cliffs they were running around eating like 50 different types of i mean they were eating everything they were eating tons of shit and um truly remarkable experiencing that but the real difference is that they were like three times bigger than their, bro than their other sisters and brothers. They were significantly healthier. Um, just incredible difference between the, the, the health of these bubbies and the rest of the flock. And so I'm under the impression that this, uh, this style of silvo pasture is actually uh, sort of ideal for the, for the system. And I, clearly here, clearly what we see is that we don't need to deforest anything. We, you see, this is this is very similar to what's happening in Finland. How we, even the sheep are grown like this very similarly, where you you just need to put up a fucking fence. You don't need to cut any trees down, and you don't want to either because the grass that grows under the trees and there's a lot of food and there's a lot of stuff that grows in the forest that grows in the 
that grows in 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 uh, on the forest floor. Like it's an incredible, very rich, very calm, very healthy way to grow these animals. And even we have chickens also, and they're kind of like half silvo pastures. They in the summers especially, they just spend most of the time running around in uh, the forested areas. <clears throat> we lost one this year. Something picked it up and flew off with it. But that's you know, that's the risk of letting them roam freely is that they're going to get picked up by some fucker flying around. But again, this is like we don't need to actually cut trees down. We don't need to cut trees down for uh, to graze animals because animals most of the time live in the fucking forests. Like they're just going to go and meet their little forest friends like deer and moose. You know, and I, you see this all the time with the sheep. There's deers on the field and they sort of half interact with the sheep. So silvopasture is a thing. And uh, the whole deforestation thing is completely fucking nonsense when it's associated with cows. Because most the, the most intense form of deforestation um, is mainly roads. And let's see what they say here about arable farming. In the rainforest areas, usually takes the form of slash and burn agriculture, especially in the forest areas of sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. Several studies burning 1991 described this as the most important mechanism of deforestation in these areas. Overall, the area cropped... The, overall, the area cropped cropped increase over the last two decades when population pressure is low, less than 30 people per square kilometer, and the area deforested in relatively small secondary forest climax vegetation can return, thus limiting longer-term soil erosion. If population pressure increases further, a downward spiral of declining soil fertility and crop yields emerges. So you see, if you have if you have a certain level of population density associated with the deforested areas that are turned into... Um, uh, farm areas, you the crop yield and the soil fertility get affected. In Central and South America, the total area under crops has uh, remained stable, but slash and burn cultivation continues at the primary fro forest frontier and is compensated by desertion of earlier depleted cropping areas of their conversion to pasture. This conversion of cropland to pasture is common practice as many ranchers use a cr uh, crop of corn to generate income for future ranching. Again, like, and all that corn is being used to make that sugar. Those pro, the, you know, that's the GMO corns and all this kind of stuff. It's all being used to make sugar and, and in the fast food industry it has, it has very little to do with the actual cows. Again, most of the cows, you just let them fucking graze in the forests. They're fine there. That they're just going to eat all the grass that grows. Most of the time, they don't really need, like, you, 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 you prepare hay for winter seasons. You prepare hay for the autumn seasons and the early spring seasons. You, you create shitloads of hay. You cut up the grass. You let, it, you let the grass overgrow. You cut it. You dry it. You put it into bags. And then you store it. You're going to need a ton of it. You're going to need a lot of it for, for, for cows. But the fact of the matter is, those that's again just grass it doesn't take a lot of work for it to do that and the, a massive hay bale is like 20 euros here like a ton literally a ton of dry grass is like 20 bucks so again it's just it's like you're not deforesting anything and when you drive around the countryside out here especially in Finland you see that uh, and you if you look and pay attention very closely that all of the deforestation that's occurred over the last few centuries is all for growing potatoes. It's all for growing oats. It's all for growing plants that are used in human consumption. It's the same. And then now there's sweet potatoes. So I don't know what you know what a sweet potato is. There. So these, they're pretty delicious actually. Um, so these are um, part of the same so these are you know they're pretty delicious but in Finland these are grown to make sugar out of okay sugar is not you don't want that in your diet everybody knows that everybody knows 
sugar is extremely addictive and unhealthy and dangerous for your health. Again, but we're growing these sweet potatoes for the sugar industry. They're for humans, they're for people. You know, um, in Indonesia, transmigration projects moving p uh, people from overpopulators of Yerjana to lesser populated out outer islands have often been cited as the principal cause of deforestation. So you see, like, transmigration projects are also a major cause of deforestation, transmigration being moving, so having a problem with overpopulation in one area and moving those people to lesser populated uh, and here outer islands. Islands really suffer badly from, from deforestation and it's made significantly worse. You can see this between uh, Haiti This is really sad what's happening between these two countries. So this is pretty rough idea here of what's going on. Haiti uh, adopted these um, these bullshit scam save the world uh, climate change uh, uh, policies where it made it illegal for people to use natural gas. It made it illegal for people to use all these different types of uh, quote unquote fossil fuels are just literally fucking uh, bio f like they're they're hydrocarbons natural you know, anyway uh, which are naturally produced as a as a as a byproduct of geological activity in 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 the mantle under in in the earth inside the earth it has nothing to do with fossils. Um, and so what happened is these people in Haiti, they just started cutting down trees for everything because they didn't have any other access. Meanwhile, in the Dominican Republic, the government subsidizes the use of natural gas uh, in order to prevent deforestation. So again, the use of natural gas to power their economy and to power their world has, doesn't make them, they don't need to cut the trees down. Meanwhile, in Haiti, because the government is corrupt and... They, 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 um, they have all these climate change, green world, eco-friendly policies. What's happened is that the entire nation became deforested and a massive cesspool of corruption and dangerous activity. And yeah, meanwhile, Dominican Republic is just this, you know, the exact opposite. And here you even see, look, why Haiti is so dangerous and the Dominican Republic so safe or something, right? There's a video on that. There's a lot of videos on this. Just, It's just terrible. And this is all a byproduct of these climate change assholes, these vegans and these fucking idiots uh, who, who just, who, who want to impose their socialist philosophy on everybody. And this is the byproduct. You have complete deforestation. And to recover, now look at this soil. I mean, to recover into this, it's it's not going to happen very quickly because you need all those ruminants. You need a change in policy. You need a change in, you know. So, again, cropping is the first land use. Uh, so, I've been cited as a principal, principal cause of deforestation. Again, cropping is the first land use. Cropping is the first land use and livestock are introduced quite late in the farming system and mainly in environmentally friendly stall feeding systems. Animal agriculture is therefore not one of the leading causes of de deforestation. So again, yeah, it animals come pretty late in this whole in this in this domino effect. In sub-Saharan Africa, crop production and especially the expansion of permanent plantation crops such as oil palm and rubber have been major causes of deforestation. Very little tropical, very little tropical rainforest has been converted into ranches on this continent. Forest overexploitation is also an important factor in deforestation, especially in Asia and Africa. Uh, where about 20% of the areas are overexploited. Such overlogged areas are then easily converted into shifting cultivation areas. Logging is not an uh, is not important as a cause of overexploitation in South America. So you see, like it's it's just a scapegoat. You know, they're pumping these vegans, they're pumping all these vulnerable, gullible people. 
with images of, you know, slaughterhouses, right? All day. And that's, you know, these vegans, they, they just get shocked. You know, you're talking about like very fragile women, you know, women that, that, that are, you know, kind of introverted, partially extroverted. They're spending a lot of time at, uh, alone at home on the couch, on their phone, just swiping through social media, and they see all this, and the and the algorithms are pumping them full of these videos of pigs getting fucking slaughtered. Yeah, it's not pretty slaughtering a fucking animal. <laughs> Duh. I mean, I've slaughtered a lot of animals, and it sucks. Like, it's a, it's, but you know, you, I feel like if you really truly are a vegan, or if you truly, if you're truly like, um, if you truly... Um, encompass those those philosophies associated with what vegans believe or at least climate change people believe then you would probably go out of your way to ensure that the animal has the least amount of suffering by learning how to slaughter the animals as efficiently as possible so I feel like I feel like in a way knowing how to cleanly efficiently and um ethically slaughter animals is more vegan friendly than not eating meat because you're you're you are taking the responsibility yourself to ensure that the animal doesn't suffer you know a lot of people don't give a fuck how they slaughter these animals and they can get really dirty like they don't have sharp knives there's, there's a you know there's a lot of stuff uh, a lot of fucked up people out there so it's nice to you know it's 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 nice to know how to do it efficiently but it sucks doing it you know it's especially when you've spent a lot of time with these animals but again eating meat is like the most environmentally friendly shit you can do because the animals are just grazing the forests they're helping the soil grow they're you don't need to deforest anything they can survive you know hot summers a couple summers ago we had like super super hot summer even the fucking grass on the field was dying. We had to water the grass, you know. Like anything that was exposed to the sun would die. There was trees just randomly dying that had been there for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Because there was so little rainfall. And there was a massive crash in the actual amount of crops, crop yield all over the country. Because... All it took was one hot summer and 30-40% of the crops fucking died. And then a huge percent of it is eaten by the deer, which you're not allowed to hunt until hunting season. But by that time, a lot of these deers have already died from overeating the crops. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And so um, this video, I really strongly recommend you watch Debunking Vegan Myths by Soil Cattle and Deforestation Anti-War Mindset. Um, he puts it into really good perspective. He goes into details about it, how, how, it, how it's just, it's so obvious that it has nothing to do with cow production. And this, this is the same thing with corn. This is the same thing with a lot of other, uh, a lot of other, um, agricultural methods where we're not, we're growing most of the plants we're growing, whether it's corn or potato, sweet potatoes, soybean, whatever, the vast majority of it is for processed foods and it's for it's it's for these foods that are basically making people sick so that they need pharmaceutical pharmaceutical intervention and the most ridiculous thing is that the people who 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 invest in these in this agriculture are also the same people who invest in pharmaceuticals there's a huge relationship uh, going on between the pharmaceutical industry and the fast food industry and these people that are basically deforesting causing deforestation now one thing we got to remember is that um so taken all together the greening of the planet over the last two decades presents an increase in leaf area on plants and trees equivalent to the area covered by all amazon for rainforest there are now more than two million square miles of extra green leaf area per year compared to early 2000s a five percent increase so what what we the one thing right and then here's another one carbon dioxide fertilization greening earth so the increase in carbon dioxide which is not from human intervention the increase in carbon dioxide is a byproduct of the solar activity and the heat so the sun dictates the heat on earth 
the sun is heating up the planet. We're, you know, we're right now the coldest era in, in Earth history. It's the coldest average that's ever existed in Earth history right now. And, of course, we're only going to get warmer, right? Uh, it's also some of the lowest carbon dioxide levels in Earth history. So it's all going to start going up. And as carbon dioxide goes up, plant growth goes up. If, you were, if you've ever had a high school biology, you would know that there's these... Um, the plants and photosynthesis is predominantly fueled by carbon dioxide and plants thrive at around 1000 parts per million which is four times five times more than we have right now um, and for most of earth history we've had massive fluctuations from like 2000 parts per million to 150 parts per million so this is last, you know, four billion years. It's like it's just just incredible fluctuations all the time of carbon dioxide levels on Earth. And plants, they have these in their leaves. They have this thing called the stomata, and the stomata is basically the nostril of the plant that absorbs the carbon dioxide from nature. And right now, so the stomatas under the plant leaves, they're actually stretched out. They're gasping. They're, they're starving for carbon dioxide. So we don't even have enough carbon dioxide right now for proper plant growth. And um, because of, partially because of this increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, we've had massive, massive global greening. But one thing that you have to remember is that... Um, let me see if we can find this. One thing that we have to remember... One thing we have to remember is that, I'm not sure if this is the right place to look, but throughout the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, there was like a near complete deforestation of everything. And so we've been recovering from the last like two, three thousand years of deforestation. We've been recovering from that and we're getting, and, uh, you know, you got to remember like all the houses were built of wood, all the fires, you know, and as coal was introduced in our society as uh, um, as these um, oil and, and other hydrocarbons were introduced into our society standard of living went up deforestation went down um, technology soared like everything that made us who we are today is a byproduct of these hydrocarbons replacing raw materials from nature right we don't use whale oil anymore to lubricate our car engines you know we don't use squirrel furs to make a hat anymore like that's not a thing oh this doesn't work let's see I don't like Quora Quora is full of redditors uh, this is bullshit This is what I mean. You have these people that are like wishful thinkers that don't know shit. It it was compl the dark age. The dark age is like completely deforested the fucking areas, and we've been recovering since then. We've been and and and, and the dark ages was partially triggered by asteroidal activity, which caused global change, climate change. There was a lot of dust in the air, and reduced the sunlight, which could penetrate into the soil and plants, and so you had less food. And the Dark Ages were triggered basically by that. Um, and uh, we've been recovering from the deforestation ever since. And again, uh, since World War II, we, ha we really haven't had any need to, to burn wood for, for, for very much. And uh, there's just been a massive growth in, in, uh, in trees and for forest density all over the world. So even with the ongoing deforestation that's going on, thanks to uh, these vegans and this fast food industry and the pharmaceutical giants m deliberately making people sick, we've actually have like a doubling, a massive, it's like, oh, actually they said here 5%, but a massive, massive greening of the planet, right? 
trend in annual average leaf area percentage per decade. 20 so look at that. Like we've actually had massive increase in forestation all over. Isn't that interesting? The greening of the planet over the last two decades represents an increase in leaf area on plants and trees equivalent to the area covered by all of the Amazon rainforest. All of the Am all the Amazon rainforest. So I mean that's 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 a lot. That really is a lot. China and India account for one third of the greening, but contain only nine percent of the planet's land area covered in vegetation. Here, this is key. China and India account for one third of the greening, but contain only nine percent of the planet's land area covered in vegetation. A surprising finding, considering the general notion of land degradation in populous countries from overexploitation. The thing that people always forget is how fucking huge the planet is. Humans are almost insignificant. Like, despite everything we have, despite you know all our airplanes, all the tractors, all the cities, and all this kind of shit. Or pretty insignificant factor in nature. Like, in order for humans to really have an impact on the planet, we need like trillions of people living on the planet. We need like literally trillions of people to live on this planet before there's like any noticeable impact uh, in the in the in the biosphere. We're just we're just not that many people. There's very few of us. Like, okay, yeah, eight billion people sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. It's it really isn't. There's not all that many people on this planet. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> there could be a lot more and we could be a lot healthier and a lot smarter if we didn't have this ma major corruption associated with, um, this, 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 this fast food and, uh, pharma company, uh, brotherhood, you know, these butt buddies, which are just relying on each other to poison the population, make people sick. Just think like how much of the advertisements on TV are fast food or and pharma, you know. Uh, in Finland, pharma is not allowed to advertise, but fa he, every other advertisement is literally a chocolate bar, and everybody knows how bad sugar is. So isn't this interesting? All this stuff again, silvo pasture. You don't. We don't need to cut down trees to grow cows. You literally just put up a fence and let them roam. How you know? This is how reindeer farmers fucking grow there you know let's see we go reindeer farming or reindeer herding you know these these little bubbies they're just running around all over the place they don't some you know you see what i mean they don't even have they yeah. this is pretty close to silvo silvo pasturing it's delicious meat the fur is incredible. They're super cute. You know, there's nothing... It's all perfect. Like, it's all just one wonderful, beautiful system that works super well. And look, no plants grow in the winter. So, you know, plant agriculture is extremely susceptible to either an increase or decrease in temperature by just a few degrees. While these bubbies just grow on some fur and, you know do their own thing you just feed them some shit you stored or whatever i'm sure i don't know what they eat in the winter but they've survived here for thousands and thousands of years so there's something in the snow they're eating um and the thing is like the winter yeah anyway so this is like another example of this silvo pasture humans and animals are supposed to live together right which is what vegans want to believe but they don't understand that in order for in order for certain animals to thrive, the only symbiotic nature, right, and the, the only symbiotic relationship we have with animals are the ones where either the animal helps us feed, like dogs, right? Dogs are hunting dogs. I don't know if you've ever gone hunting with a dog, but it's unbelievable what they're capable of doing. It's unbelievable how breeds have their own, like, they just know what to do. You don't have to train them. They just fucking know what to do, and they just go for it. Uh, it's just, in, their instinct is so powerful. You should see those moose hunting dogs, the deer hunting dogs, the bird hunting dogs. I mean, it's just, it's just first nature. It's just, they're born and they're ready to go. 
and they know exactly what to do and they're so well disciplined without almost any fucking training and it's the same with cows right our relationship with cows is is slightly different than the dogs but again or, or for example our cats the relationship we have with cats the reason we have a relationship with cats is so that cats can eat all the fucking mice can eat all this all these little critters that are around and little snakes and shit that may or may not uh, piss on our food supply you know and infect our food supply or you know eat the the insulation layer between your walls so cats dogs deer cow chickens all this is that's what the true vegan society looks like you got to eat these animals in order to in order to respect their existence the the symbiotic nature in order to care for these animals in order for this this symbiotic relationship between humans and animals to exist we have to eat them it's our it's it's as as carnivores in 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 on this planet our moral responsibility is to eat these animals that's our evolutionary responsibility we're carnivores we have to eat meat and and we have to eat meat in order to sustain nature our role in nature every animal has its fucking role in nature right every animal has evolved to have an adapted diet that is perfectly fitted in its environment to sustain that environment right as soon as you know you look at humans as soon as we start eating plants we're cutting shit down animals some animals going extinct or getting threatened there's actually almost any more animals that have gone extinct by humans it's like seven total but anyway um so you see that it's like it's a really ironic situation and it's again it's one of these psyopses and the way psyopses work is that they trick gullible people into believing that the exact opposite is true right you have the way things are the truth but you trick these people's logic centers in their brains to think that the exact opposite is actually the truth right and so it becomes very difficult for these people to break out from that oppositeness into the actualness right because their whole brain is twisted where the only thing that makes sense to them is like the illogical ridiculous uh you know uh, counter truth to the scenario to the to the to the statement at hand so yeah pretty interesting but i'm gonna leave it there there i didn't even realize that we've been talking for so long so fucking silvopasture bros silvopasture